I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Mark Lichtenfeld, Chief Income Strategist at the Oxford Club. Thank you so much for being here today, Mark. Oh, great as always to talk with you, Charlotte. Yes, it's great to have you back. And, you know, we are speaking at a very interesting time. Among many other things, we still have COVID-19 in play. We also have the U.S. presidential election coming up very soon. To start off, I wondered if you could tell me what areas of the market you're seeing opportunities in right now and where you think might be good to stay away from on the other side of things. Yeah, I think that basically the areas that have been working will continue to work for a while. So things like technology, healthcare, um, and and anything that any kind of company that has really adapted well to this new normal. So even a company like Chipotle, which you know was very early on was able to come up with an app that allowed people to order um, and, and not have to wait in line on the stores in the stores. So companies that, that were you know, really ahead of the curve in that way, I think should continue to do well. The areas I would stay away from are uh, you know, companies that, that rely not just on foot traffic, but for people to stay in the physical building. So certainly things like movie theaters have been having a very difficult time or, or even maybe you know, apparel like uh, you know, retailers that, that sell women's apparel um, and maybe even with a demographic that skews older. Uh, you know, uh, Typically, older Americans are not returning to the malls like kids are. So any, any area where you need somebody to be in a physical location for a while, I think is going to continue to struggle. Okay, very interesting. I, I think a lot of those are actually quite intuitive, so that is good to hear. As we know, your focus is on dividend investing. We talked about that the last time we spoke with you. This time, I want to dig a little deeper into that concept. So when we spoke to you previously, you explained you're interested in companies that consistently increase their dividend. Every investor is different, but what percentage of a person's portfolio in general would you like to see in dividend stocks? Yeah, so as you said, in general, this is a very, uh, very general kind of a number because every investor has different time horizons, different tolerance for risk. Uh, but the Oxford Club recommends 65% of a portfolio be invested in stocks including 5% in real estate investment trusts, which are typically dividend payers. So of, of a stock portfolio, I would like to see an investor have at least half in dividend payers. Uh, you know, I know a lot of investors like to invest in tech stocks and try to find that next Tesla, Facebook, Amazon, you know, try to hit home runs. Um, but in my opinion, having those mature companies that generate cash flow, that pay dividends and increase those dividends every year, is a much uh, more conservative and much more uh, certain way to grow your wealth over the long term. And how should investors manage their dividend stocks after they have amassed their position? So I think it depends on your goals and your time horizon. So if you are a younger investor that doesn't need the income today and you're reinvesting the dividends, really your, your goal should be to hold these stocks really forever or as long as, as possible. I, you know, I'm talking 10, 20, 30 years if possible. If that's your goal, you really don't wanna see investors jumping out of stocks because a company has a rough year or two or because there's a bear market. You, know, you certainly wanna be on top of your, your investments. You wanna understand if the fundamentals have changed, is, is the company uh, suddenly obsolete or if their products or services are obsolete. But you want to own a company for a long time, especially one that is growing their dividends every year where you're re reinvesting them, because over that long term, those 10, 20, 30 years, that is going to compound a very significant amount of wealth. And as I mentioned in the previous answer, it, it's one of the most certain ways that you can grow your wealth over the long term. Uh, for the investors that, are, uh, that have a little bit shorter time horizon and need the income today, um, then we do recommend a 25% trailing stop. That way, if things go south, either with the company or the overall market, uh, you do get out with some of your capital, uh, you, most of your capital. And, and actually, if you're in a bull market and things turn around, you actually probably get out with profits. But you know, for investors that are collecting the income today, they probably have a shorter, shorter time horizon, which is why we want to see them uh, take a little bit more of a, uh, an active step in preserving their capital. 
Okay, and I think this this feeds well into my next question, which we have a following that's quite interested in mining, specifically in gold. And as the gold market improves, we're starting to hear about companies increasing their dividends. So I wondered if you have any advice for investors who are working within a sector like that, where dividends might not be consistent from year to year or from quarter to quarter. Sure, and yeah, and there are lots of companies that have variable dividend policies, and so. I think it's important to, to just know why you are investing in the company. Or if, if you're investing in a gold miner that has a variable dividend, but you're investing for the capital gains potential, then, then that dividend is gravy. Anything that you get from it is wonderful, um, but it, it shouldn't be your main objective. If, if income is your objective, then you do need to be very aware that that policy is variable, that the dividend will fluctuate. And if, if you... If you look at a company and let's say you expect to make $500 uh, in income, let's say per year, and I, I don't think you should get into that stock if you need that $500. You should be ready for it to go down to $200 perhaps. And if that still works for you, great, then you can invest in it and hopefully it doesn't go down that low and even goes higher. But you know, I think you wanna understand what your minimum threshold is for income if you are being an income investor. Um, and, and not uh, not get caught by surprise. The last thing you want is to have a bill coming due that you're planning to pay with your dividends and the check comes and it's half of what you expected. Okay, very helpful. And I wondered if you know of any gold companies that have a particularly good dividend right now, or if not a gold company, perhaps a general mining company. Sure, so I haven't found a gold company right now that I'm particularly excited about when it comes to dividends. Um, I have found a, a metals miner that I really like, Rio Tinto. Uh, they're the second largest uh, metals miner in the world, uh, particularly in iron ore and with what should be a stimulus package coming in the United States next year, um, regardless of who wins the presidency and, and the makeup of Congress, there should be some kind of stimulus package that I would imagine will have a, a meaningful infrastructure component. Uh, I think, I think iron is going to have a, a big year next year. Uh, China is, is certainly continuing to build. There's tremendous demand from China. And Rio Tinto has a new mine in Africa that it actually shares with the Chinese government and some others. Uh, so I think Rio Tinto is, is going to do really well over the long term. And they have a, a pretty nice dividend right at about 5% right now. Okay, also very helpful. Now, just while we're leaving the topic of gold, I wondered if you had any more thoughts you could share on the market. We talked a little about it, a little bit about it last time, but any changes in what you're seeing, especially as we are heading into this more turbulent time? Uh, yes, no changes. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, it's going to be a turbulent time. So I, I think most people are expecting the election to be somewhat chaotic, uh, somewhat uncertain, even after November third. I think that's probably priced into the markets to some degree, but depending on the level of chaos, uh, that could certainly be good for gold. But more importantly, I think is, is the US fiscal policy where um, we don't have a stimulus package happening right now. But again, I think by next year, no matter who the president is, we will certainly have one. Just the size of it uh, may vary a little bit, whether we're talking 1.8 trillion or 3 trillion, who knows, but whatever it is, it's gonna be a very large number and the United States is just piling on the debt, just continuing to print money that's inflationary. And I think that's gonna be a very positive for gold uh, over the next several years. Okay, perfect. And I would like to take the conversation back to dividend investing now. I wondered if you could talk a little bit about misconceptions that you see among investors about the strategy, maybe common mistakes that you see. So I think a lot of people think of dividend investing as kind of what your your granddaddy did, and it's boring, and you invest in you know IBM and um, and and some really old stodgy companies. And and while there are companies like that, um, you know IBM, for example, or even Coca Cola. I mean, I mean, no nobody went broke investing in Coca Cola. I can tell you that. But there are still plenty of really exciting companies out there that pay dividends and grow their dividends every year. I mean, a company like Texas Instruments has done remarkably well over the last few years. Digital Realty, which is a company that houses server farms. Uh, Broadcom has a very strong dividend. It's been growing it for years. Uh, you know, they're a chip maker. So there's a, there are a lot of great companies in technology, some really exciting companies in the energy space. And 
uh, you know, you don't have to buy these these old boring companies if you don't want to. I, and, and many of those old boring companies are, are fantastic investments, don't get me wrong. But for people who, who like a little bit more of a story, there are plenty of them out there. And, and I think the other major thing that people don't really consider is just how significant the power of compounding is over time. Uh, you know, I, I think um, it was Albert Einstein who's, who famously said that uh, compound interest is this, the most powerful force in the universe. And so, you know, you can, you can find a stock that pays a three or even a 4% dividend yield, which is solid, but nothing, nothing too exciting. But if this company's raising their dividend by 8% a year, you triple your money in 10 years and you probably get about 10 times your money in 20 years. And that would be at the one-time investment reinvesting the dividend if that company just simply tracked with the S&P 500. So the numbers that, that you can achieve by reinvesting your dividends or, or investing in these companies that grow their dividends every year can really be very, very significant. And I think, I think people just think of dividend investing as all, I'll collect my 4% a year rather than how much wealth can be built by investing in these companies. Perfect. Now, as we're wrapping up, amid everything else that we have going on in the market right now, we are heading into quarterly earnings season. I wondered if you could talk a little bit about what you're looking for in reports from a company you've invested in, or perhaps a company that you're interested in and looking at. Well, I think a lot of companies, uh, you know, the expectations are quite low. Um, S&P 500 earnings are expected to drop 21% this year. So I think the the CEOs and the analysts have, have set the bar low on purpose. And so I do think we're going to see some significant earnings beats, which would be very strong for stocks. So some of the companies I mentioned before, uh, Broadcom, uh, Texas Instruments, uh, also Raytheon, I think a lot of these companies are going to uh, really do very well and, and exceed expectations. Um, and I think it's going to be a very strong earnings season. And combined with the election, I think I think we could have a very strong market in the next few weeks. I do think we could see a sell the news rally at some point um, after the election, but I think for the next few weeks things could be quite strong, especially if these companies do consistently beat earnings expectations. Perfect. And any final thoughts you would leave us with as we head into Q4? Well, as I, as I just mentioned, I think we are going to see a little bit of a sell the news reaction after the election. I think a lot of things are priced in, whether it's it, whether it's just market chaos or, or, or election chaos, uh, I think that is probably priced in. Uh, possibly a Joe Biden win is priced in. I think maybe the only thing that's not priced in is a, a President Trump uh, you know, convincing victory. But even then, that should be positive for the market, theoretically, because if he wins, you would assume that the Republicans will control the Senate again. And uh, the market certainly has liked uh, the Trump administration of the last four years, it's, uh, it's been up over 50% since he took over in 2017. So uh, I do think we are going to see uh, pretty solid performance from the market coming into the election and maybe right after. And then at some point, the market will take a breath and, and possibly sell the news. Okay, well, thank you so much for the perspective on what's going on in the market. Definitely, it sounds like it's going to be an interesting few weeks. Thank for you so sure. much for being here. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Mark Lichtenfeld with the Oxford Club.